Upgrades. Yet the honor to be here with my man Roden. Hello. <laughs> and we <laughs> are here reviewing Bad Batch season two. Uh, we got the pleasure of seeing the first half of the season. Yeah. And now, oh god. I just it's it's so whenever I get a chance to come back to Star Wars animation, I know it's a treat. Because that is consistently good. That's all I'm going to say about that. And <laughs> you go well, ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Star Wars Animation has been really uh, hold, like before the Mandalorian, Star Wars Animation kept that torch burning. You know, they, they've, been, they've been putting the series on their back. We know back from uh, Clone Wars, where that made the prequels a better story because it gave us more context, right? Gave us more mm -hmm. insights and clues, made some characters better, gave us a relationship between Obi Wan and Anakin. We know Star Wars Rebels. Say what you just want to say about the, the sequels. But Star Wars Rebels felt like Star Wars, and it gave us more depth to the lore, gave us some more interesting characters, ex exploded stuff for cosplay. Um, was a good a, a good example of rest representation uh, for Star Wars, and gave us some of the most epic moments of characters we, we've ever seen associated with the franchise. Um, oh, yeah. Then, when you, then you come back with, with finishing finishing the Clone Wars and coming back with that, you know, maybe one story was kind of that, but then they finished with that Ahsoka during Order 66 with Darth Maul, her first of the clones, and the emotional impact uh, uh, of seeing what's going on. So Star Wars animation has been putting in the work, putting in the work. The voice actors, you can tell there's a passion behind these projects. Now, Ronan, as I've said, we've had in our chats, uh, there was a thing back in the day uh where it was like clone wars the unfinished or whatever lost episodes or something like that that was on the starwars.com channel yeah and bad batch was first introduced you remember this mm -hmm. oh yeah i, I like, vividly remember that yeah yeah there was a couple episodes on there of course one with like mace windu like threatening an army of clone uh of not clones of uh uh um Droids, droids by himself saying i've yeah. killed thousands of y'all through this war you best surrender <laughs> um yeah. uh but there was one where they introduced the Bad Batch, right? Now, me, in that episode, I was not a fan. I was not a fan of that. I know a lot of people were. Then the first season, then they, then they appeared in the last finishing up season of Clone seven. Wars they brought back. Huh? Season seven of Clone Wars is when they first season. officially introduced them in the first arc. Yeah. And season seven, hey, uh, a lot of people liked them. Um, you can tell by the reaction of some fans. Um, they 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 um, really grafted onto a lot of a lot of different characters. Coming into um, season one of Bad Batch, where they linked it to some of our our Rebel characters, um, showed their version of Order sixty six, mm -hmm. and they started their adventures of how they were going to make their way in the new the new galaxy controlled by the Empire. And there's such a uh, an A team feel to this team, which is why I think one of the reasons why uh, Filoni loves this idea so much. Um, I thought the first season was meh, but I think you have a different opinion, Ronan. You liked the first season, right? I really dug the first season. Now I can uh, understand that people be like, "Oh, the the, the single ventures felt very repetitive and whatnot," but when it focused deeply on characters like um uh hunter and his dynamic with omega who's now joined the bad batch um seeing echo join this group to where he was in, in the clones and then where he 
was brought back in the last season of Clone Wars. So I, I, I thought the A team vibe. Um, I like the dynamics and how each of them has their own unique style of, of, of fighting and combat. And um, I, I just, anytime we get to spend another time in another part of the, of the galaxy on the different lenses, that either might feel similar, but again, different lenses, I'm for it. And the fact that they integrated characters like Fennec Shan and Cad Bane in that first season and taking it all the way back to Camino, I was, I was hoping, yeah, it's not, how do I put it this way? They, Rebels is still for me, my, my group that I latched on in terms of animation. And then Tales of the Jedi came along and that, that thing just gave all the shows a run for their money. But Bad Batch, oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I did not mention Tales of the Jedi, which was just a beautiful series. It's a beautiful series. Poetry, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, I'm interrupt you, but I had to. I had to no, no, it's okay. But, but Bad Batch is that sweet spot of like, it's fun and high and whatnot. Kids will love it. But then once in a while, an arc or an episode or two will hit home and it'll speak ballings that go the same way that the movies have. And we'll talk about. In a non-spoiler way, an episode of this season that we, we you know, we after we we're like, whoa, now that is impressive. And I, you got to get prompt to, to Bad Batch because they have been pushing the animation off of what they did in season seven with what they can do now with characters in terms of not even just characters, but just the environments. I'm always blown away whenever a character interacts with dirt or snow or rain. And these shows, it's it's something to applaud the animators who work their asses off behind this show. But season two, four episodes in, um, I am not going over the moon and going, oh my gosh, but I'm like, okay, I'm back in the saddle. Where are we going from here? What what are we tackling now that we're still, you know, the Empire has won, the Republic has fallen, and we're in the midst of a few decades or so of the Civil War. And um, I, I like what I've seen so far, but I love episode three. And we'll get into it right no, now. I, we'll get to three. I thought we're still in the midst of the beginning of this, right? The, the, the rebellion hasn't really formed yet. It hasn't or at least formed the yet? single cell yet. Because so, I think as far as the first year from that first season, but I'm assuming because, I mean, Omega aged a little bit. I think it's still a few years out of Empire Day. So so we have the Bad Batch, and if you didn't know, um, the Bad Batch is a team of mutated clones for the most part, or something yeah. off about them. So there's the original team, um, minus their sniper, uh, uh, one of the Crosshair. one of the one of the clones from Delta Squad. Is it Delta Squad? I think so. But if there was well, a team Echo, of clones Yeah. There was a team of clones that we that if you watch Clone Wars, we got introduced to as they were rookies with heavy and fives and all them, and we got to see, got the feel when mm-hmm. they had their successes and their um, their defeats throughout the throughout Clone Wars. It was, it was a, it was a oh, stable yeah. point to see where they were that as squad, um, and we got one of them on there. So, so in the first season, they're trying to find their footing, and they kind of land in. Um, taking on odd jobs and mercenary jobs for Sid. And that's where we pick up in the season, where they're at and one of their former team members who has stayed with the Empire. Um, So off the bat, I have to say that I have enjoyed this season immensely more than I had did the the, um, The original season. season. The first season. Yeah, uh, even though some of the stories are... Excuse me. Uh, still paint by numbers storytelling. Uh, they're done well. Um, there's one particular episode in episode four. We we've gotten to see five episodes so far. Uh, we're five, right? I think it's four. We're at yeah, f- yes, four. episode four. Yeah. Um, um, which I think is probably one of the best Star Wars uh, stories told in in this generation of Star Wars. Would be my opinion. Yeah, episode three of this season. Um, it does so much with few characters, and that's oh, wait, a test. Is it episode three, 
Is it episode three? We, we've seen the first four, but episode three is, is the one where they okay. bring up the, the, the heavy themes and talks of what it means now post Clone Wars. Okay. So, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, people. I might, I might have the wrong number. Um, but, yeah. And they've done a lot with it. So, so maybe the first season they set the characters up and we go from there. Now, it's still. Now, one thing that's good about the Bad Batch is that because of the era they're in, there's so many characters that can come up that that we can interact with on different levels. You could have any, you could have anybody from Bubba Fett. Not that I've seen. I'm just saying you can. To 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 uh, Quillen Voss. You could have Rex or Cody or or um, even the Rebels team as they're forming um, show up in this. There's such a wide open palette. Um, now I want to say that the still the the weak part of the show for me is the main bad batch. But when they interact with other people, it, it really it really um, elevates the show for me. Yeah, it adds. It, it's oh. sort of like protein where. Oh, that man was cool. I mean, I was like, I'll cut you. <laughs> well, He's like, what that, you say about a cut that you? Visual, <laughs> Yeah, that visual of that episode three. As for right now, we will tell you that's the one to look out for. To be like, that is gonna, it's gonna. If you're a fan of Star Wars, if you're a fan of the themes and the um, the politics that they bring up in Star Wars, that one's gonna hit rock hard. Oh, okay, yeah. So he's talking about episode three. I was right. I was talking about episode four. I think episode four is one of the best ones for me. Um, right. That's where we see a different well, side of. Well, three. That three is the one where where we. Bring we we throw an open side to those who stayed and integrated to the empire. Episode oh, okay. four is, is the fun Hein Jinks one that like we just came off of, but episode oh, three is the that one that five. deals with. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was five. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. All right, you know, so, yeah, so it's episode three, so we got to see the first four episodes. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, if you're a Star Wars fan, this is good eating, right? You know, gobble oh, it up. Yeah. Um, it's solid writing. The characters are pretty consistent. Um, like I said, even the quote unquote filler episodes give you some, some traction in the story and character development. And um and yeah. I and that's one thing you, I think you, you put that right. That even though the story we might know what's gonna happen, the environment they're at, I appreciate. Um the the different species droids or characters for the you know for, for that sake that they interact with it helps grow this this group that you're following and seeing how they're taking in the effects of after a war has been fought and now they have to live with the current regime and uh what people are taking to liking and doing right now i mean in episode four uh, you come to maybe suspect that a character is liking this a new sport that they've been exposed to. Um, and they bring up stuff that of like, listen, yes, there's all this battle and all these adventures he had, but there's also repercussions to it. There's the people who don't, who weren't fighting, who didn't want to be involved in this battle, and they have to live with these effects. And I, I appreciate that. Again, it could be a one-shot mission for these guys that they have to get another treasure, or they have to find someone, or they have to get their 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 lead in the jam. And yeah, so so there's a lot there's a, there's a lot here, and I would say give this a chance. I, I don't think it's as good as like uh, Tales of the Jedi that we just came off of, um, but it has potential, right? And uh, look at that beautiful clone commando. Those, that's who this should have been about. The clone commandos games. That's why I think maybe that's my, that could be my bias. I love the clone commandos. They showed up in one one brief moment in the Clone Wars. Uh, I would like a story about them. But like I said, there's a lot here, people. Something great um, from animation stories. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah. Uh, if you had to, if you had to rate this this season so far. Uh, when we, when, what do you want to do? Oh, we'll do letters. Yeah, what would you give it? I would do, I would do a solid B. I would do a solid B because it's fun getting to hang out with these characters again, seeing the dynamics. Um, but I, I know in my gut feeling that there's a big, there's gonna be great arts to still come and possibly great character moments for good or bad. That are going to deliver in a few 
in the upcoming weeks. And uh, yeah, that's even uh, seeing it just not even just the season across all the shows in animation, they've never gone down lower than B. And that's saying something about what we've been getting of Star Wars. So from right now, the season is a solid B. And uh, oh man, I can't wait for folks to watch episode three. Oh, what would you give yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm I'm like a big B. Uh, I I think this has a has a strong possibility to go into a B plus. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I can't wait to I can't wait to watch the rest of the season. Uh, and we will bring you blow blah blow blaster by blaster, droid by droid action here at JVS because that's what we do here. Nobody does geek them better than us. And if you had our public commando. Uh, you pull out those deep cuts, yeah. I, I, they showed up with one episode of Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. I think they were showing what uh, uh, Vassage did to somebody. They brought the body of the Jedi Master of the Padawan because you would only send mm -hmm. that squad to do that job. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is Star Wars, right? We, we recognize the characters. We recognize the aliens in the background. I think one of the things in episode um, or the sequel series, they just do bunches of alien-looking things there. And I, and I get it. It's a vast galaxy. There's more than just the aliens we know. But one yeah. thing that makes the universe a universe is recognition of those things. You have to be you have to be slowly to bring new 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 races into something so it feels like that universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and this definitely does it because so you know the characteristics, things like that. Even there was a use of a protocol droid that we were like, "What? Well, I have a protocol droid there." Yeah, because I know what that protocol was awesome. droid is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, people. If you like Star Wars, if you like animation, if you're a fan of the Filoni verse, I suggest you check it out. The, Hell the, yeah. the Unchained Ronin over there, he, he suggests you check it out, and I sure. will, I will unleash him on you if you don't give this a chance. <laughs> um, oh, that's, God. It. that's our verdict. Nothing more to say. Sam, take us out. <laughs>